Welcome to our stakeholder demonstration of the Electronic Visit Verification Online Portal. To meet the federal law requirement, the California Department of Social Services, or CDSS, is implementing Electronic Visit Verification, or EVV. During this demonstration, we will discuss the Electronic Services Portal, the benefits of electronic timesheets, easy registration, the current electronic timesheet, or ETS, the new proposed EVV electronic timesheet, and important things to know about EVV, such as providers do not need to check in or check out multiple times per day, and GPS will not be used to track a provider's location. CDSS has chosen to use its existing electronic services portal to implement EVV because of all the great feedback we've received from our user community. For example, got paid, electronic timesheets are awesome. This is the fastest I've ever received it. I love electronic timesheets, it's so much faster. Electronic is way better and faster. Love ETS. These are comments that IHSS providers and recipients are saying about electronic timesheets. CDSS is excited to introduce the Electronic Services Portal website. This is the new landing page or home page for portal users. The Electronic Services Portal website is a public website and is available to all IHSS and WPCS providers and recipients across the state of California which is why it is ideal for EVV users. This website is designed to be self-service, meaning it is designed to be easy to use, such as self-registration. Once providers are registered with an account on the Electronic Services Portal website, they will have the ability to do the following using their account. Online enrollment for electronic timesheets, view payment history, sign up for direct deposit online, and submit a sick leave claim online. The ability to use these services will not change with EVV. All of these services will be available for EVV users. Providers do not need to be enrolled for electronic timesheets to view their payment history, sign up for direct deposit online, or submit a sick leave claim online. Providers can do all of these just by registering for an account on the Electronic Services Portal website. Let's take a closer look at many of the benefits of electronic timesheets. Some of the benefits of using electronic timesheets are, providers can submit timesheets online and get paid faster. No mailing time. No postage is required. Reduce timesheet errors. Violation warnings for providers before their timesheets are submitted. Timesheets cannot be submitted without signatures, which is the number one reason that paper timesheets are not processed by the system. Check timesheet and payment status. For providers, this means no more calls to help desks or not knowing when they are going to receive their check. Request supplemental timesheets and Recipients can review and approve timesheets online or on the phone. Our goal is to make the new EVV process as easy as possible for providers and recipients. The registration process for the Electronic Services Portal is easy. To register, providers and recipients need to enter some user information, for example, their name and date of birth. Enter either their provider or case number, enter a valid email address, and create a username and a password. This is the same process EVV users will use to register. Now, let's take a look at the ETS timesheets, both the current ETS timesheet and then the new proposed ETS timesheet that will be used for EVV. We will look at both timesheets for both providers as well as recipients. Let's start by looking at the current ETS timesheet for providers. On the current ETS timesheet, 
Time is entered for each day worked during a work week. There is a column for all days in a work week, Sunday through Saturday. Then there is a column to enter all hours and minutes worked for those corresponding days. For example, on this timesheet for Sunday, in the hours box, nine hours are entered. In the minutes box, 30 minutes are entered. For Monday, in the hours box, eight hours are entered. In the minutes box, zero minutes are entered. For Tuesday, in the hours box, seven hours are entered. In the minutes box, 30 minutes are entered. For the remaining days in the work week in this demonstration, the entered hours will be automatically populated. For Saturday, which was a day that was not worked for this recipient, no time was entered for this day. When providers finish with entering time, whether it be daily or entering a full work week as was shown, providers need to select the save button to save the entered time. This will also update the work week total and the timesheet total. To enter time for the other work weeks that are included on this timesheet, providers need to select the corresponding blue arrow on the right side. When all of the time has been entered and saved for the timesheet, providers need to select the Submit button. Now, let's take a look at the new proposed EVV timesheet for providers to view the enhancements and similarities to the current ETS timesheet. The enhancements on the new proposed EVV timesheet for providers are the entry boxes for EVV information, as well as the addition of the previously claimed hours. The new proposed EVV timesheet for providers will work just like the current ETS timesheet for providers. There are columns that display all of the days in the work week and to enter all of the hours worked for those corresponding days by the provider. Time entry for hours worked is the same as it is today. To meet the federal law requirement, the enhancement of the EVV information includes entry boxes for start time, end time, and location. We understand that providers provide services to recipients throughout the day, but these services may not be performed consecutively. The start time is the time the first service begins on a day, and the end time is the time the last service is completed for that day. This keeps the provider from having to check in and check out multiple times throughout the day every time a service is provided. GPS is not tracking the provider's location. Providers will need to select a location for the services provided in the Location drop-down box. The options available to select from the Location drop-down box are Home, Community, or Both. Let's demonstrate how these entry boxes may work. For Sunday, remember 9 hours and 30 minutes was entered for time worked. In the Start Time entry boxes, 12 a.m. is entered. In the end time entry boxes, 11.59 p.m. is entered. Then, in the location entry box, home is selected. For those providers whose recipients require services on and off throughout the day, the start time and end time entered in this example for Sunday is the acceptable way to enter this time. For Monday, eight hours and zero minutes was entered for time worked. In the start time entry boxes, 10 a.m. is entered. In the end time entry boxes, 8 p.m. is entered. In the location entry box, community is selected. For Tuesday, seven hours and 30 minutes was entered for time worked. In the start time entry boxes, 9.30 a.m. is entered. In the end time entry boxes, 6.30 p.m. is entered. In the location entry box, both is selected. 
For the remaining days in the work week in this demonstration, the entered EVV information will be automatically populated. For Saturday, since no time was entered for time worked, start time, end time, and location can all be left blank. As with the current ETS timesheet, when finished with entering time and EVV information, whether it be daily or entering a full work week as was shown, providers need to select the Save button to save the entered time. To enter time and EVV information for the other work weeks that are included on this timesheet, providers need to select the corresponding blue arrow on the right side. When all time and EVV information has been entered and saved for the timesheet, providers need to select the Submit button. Now, let's take a look at the ETS timesheets for recipients to approve the provider's time, both the current ETS timesheet and then the new proposed EVV timesheet. Let's start by looking at the current ETS timesheet for recipients to approve. On the current ETS timesheet for recipients to approve, time entered by their providers can be reviewed by timesheet total and also by each day worked during a work week. When a timesheet is reviewed by each day worked during a work week, there is a column for all days in a work week, Sunday through Saturday. Then, there is a column to review all hours and minutes worked by their provider for those corresponding days. Recipients can also see the work week total, as well as the timesheet total. For example, on this timesheet, the recipient is reviewing their provider's submitted timesheet by each day worked during a work week. For Sunday, 9 hours and 30 minutes was entered. For Monday, 8 hours and 0 minutes was entered. For Tuesday, 7 hours and 30 minutes was entered. Recipients can review the hours for the remaining days in the work week. To review time entered for the other work weeks that are included on this timesheet, recipients need to select the corresponding blue arrow on the right side. When all of the time has been reviewed for the timesheet, recipients can select either the Approve Timesheet button or the Reject Timesheet button. Now, let's take a look at the new proposed EVV timesheet for recipients to approve to view the enhancement and similarities to the current ETS timesheet for recipients to approve. The enhancement on the new proposed EVV timesheet for recipients to approve is the ability to view the EVV information their provider entered. The new proposed EVV timesheet for recipients to approve will work just like the current ETS timesheet for recipients to approve. There are columns that display all of the days in the work week and to review all hours and minutes worked by their provider for those corresponding days. Recipients will still see the work week total as well as the timesheet total. The enhancement of the EVV information includes the ability to view the entries made by their provider for start time, end time, and location. For Sunday, Remember, 9 hours and 30 minutes was entered for time worked. In the start time entry boxes, 12 a.m. was entered. In the end time entry boxes, 11.59 p.m. was entered. In the location entry box, home was selected. For Monday, 8 hours and 0 minutes was entered for time worked. In the start time entry boxes, 10 a.m. was entered. In the end time entry boxes, 8 p.m. was entered. In the location entry box, community was selected. For Tuesday, 7 hours and 30 minutes was entered for time worked. In the start time entry boxes, 9.30 a.m. was entered. In the end time entry boxes, 6.30 p.m. was entered. In the location entry box, both was selected. 
recipients can review both the hours and EVV information for the remaining days in the work week. For Saturday, remember, no time was entered for time worked. In this instance, start time, end time, and location are all left blank. To review time and EVV information entered by the provider for the other work weeks that are included on this timesheet, recipients need to select the corresponding blue arrow on the right side. As is done with the current ETS timesheet for recipients to approve, when all of the time has been reviewed for the timesheet, recipients can select either the Approve Timesheet button or the Reject Timesheet button. In addition to adding the EVV data, CDSS is also going to add the ability for recipients to print out approved timesheets for those who want to keep paper records. Here are some important things to know about EVV. No multiple check-ins and check-outs during the day. Providers will have the flexibility to enter time as they choose. And no GPS. The online portal for EVV will be easy for both the provider and recipient to use. And a help desk will be available for providers and recipients using EVV. Providers and recipients will not be alone. This concludes our stakeholder demonstration of the Electronic Visit Verification Online Portal. Additional and current information regarding EVV can be found at the highlighted website address displayed below. A stakeholder demonstration for the telephone portion of EVV is scheduled for the spring of 2019.